In the Paul Thomas Anderson film The Master, Freddy, a troubled World War II veteran, stows away aboard a ship. The captain, a man named Lancaster Dodd, is a writer and leader of a movement called The Cause. Even before the release of the film, critics noted similarities between The Cause and Dianetics, a form of self-help that eventually became Scientology. Anderson admitted this, saying, I based it on L. Ron Hubbard. A lot of it related to the early days of Dianetics. There are some superficial similarities, of course. In the film, Dodd has a son, Val, who doubts his father's sincerity. Hubbard also had a son, Quentin, who rejected his father's teachings and died of an apparent suicide at the age of 22. Dodd's wife, Peggy, is similar to Hubbard's allegedly ruthless third wife, Mary Sue. Also, Dodd's appearance and personality match up with Hubbard very well. The murder cycle scene that changes everything in the narrative fits in with a real-world occurrence involving Hubbard. The founder of Scientology famously crashed his motorcycle in 1974, and some Scientologists cite the incident as the moment when Scientology grew… stranger. But there are darker parallels in the film, and all of them are helpful when trying to understand Scientology. Scientologists believe that the reactive mind commands our awareness, purpose, thoughts, actions, and our bodies. Through counseling called auditing, Scientologists believe they can reduce and even erase the power of the reactive mind, the source of irrationality, fears, and nightmares. This all sounds like a form of therapy at first, but then it gets tricky. Those who reach the higher teachings called Operating Thetan III, or OT3, a state of being beyond the initial clear state, are then taught about Xenu, an intergalactic ruler who implanted Thetans, or alien spirits, in Earth's volcanoes millions of years ago. Scientologists believe that because Thetans move from body to body, we are able to access memories from previous lives, and these memories are the cause of a lot of our trauma. In The Master, we get a slimmed-down version of this. Lancaster Dodd also believes in past lives and that these lives cause our trauma. He, much like Hubbard, has no proof of this. Xenu was invented from whole cloth. There's no historical Xenu in the way that some other religions can claim some historicity in their mytho-historical figures through records, artifacts, and surviving documents. Also, other religions are not quite so quick to take your money. I can go to a Christian church for free every Sunday. I might hand out a dollar in the collection plate, or I might not. But if you want these counseling sessions from the Church of Scientology, you pay. And the more you go, the more you pay. In The Master, Dodd is confronted by Freddy about the fact that he seems to be making all of this up, and that the cause seems to be more of a business enterprise than a faith. The Master is teeming with nautical imagery. The beginning of the film follows Freddy's service in World War II. We see him on the beach and on his ship. It was actually L. Ron Hubbard who served in World War II, though his service was less than distinguished. Hubbard wrote that he sunk two Japanese submarines, but in reality, he opened fire on what turned out to be a log and dumped most of his depth charges on rocks. When he accidentally shelled a Mexican island, he was removed from command. Hubbard claimed he was crippled in war and that his religion saved him, but records prove that the worst he ever suffered during war was arthritis and a case of conjunctivitis. L. Ron Hubbard spent a lot of his time captaining his ship rather than living on land, but this was not due to some great love of the sea. He was avoiding the authorities, most notably for tax evasion. A branch of Scientology called Sea Organization, a fraternal religious order, got its start aboard three ships, the Diana, the Apollo, and the Athena. In the film, the ship is called the Aletheia. Aletheia, much like the real-world Sea Org ships, is a reference to Greek mythology. Members of Sea Org sign a lifetime contract to be part of the fraternal order, but the contract actually lasts for a billion years. Hubbard wanted to give the impression that those who joined the highest order of Scientology were not only joining for life, but also for their future lives. At the end of the film, Peggy says that followers of the cause are dedicated for a billion years. 
Scientologists who pose security risks or do not meet the standards of the religion are dealt with by the RPF, the Rehabilitation Project Force. They are housed in Sea Org camps and face grueling punishment. Former Scientologists have compared the RPF camps to gulags in the former Soviet Union. Those punished by the RPF often live in rat-infested basements, engaged in degrading jobs for years, all while denied visits from their spouses or children. Bear in mind, the Sea Org and the RPF are not government institutions. Scientology is a religion. They cannot legally inflict physical punishment or legally keep you somewhere against your will, but they do. Sea Org acts as if it has the authority of the military, but they have no more legal authority than you or I. Toward the end of the film, when Freddy asks where Dodd's daughter Elizabeth is, Peggy says DCF. This is never explained, but it sounds like the cause's version of the RPF. It's doubtful that Freddy will ever see Elizabeth again. In The Master, we are introduced to processing. Lancaster Dodd sits Freddy down, records him, asks him a series of questions, forcing him to answer quickly without thinking and while keeping his eyes open. No blinking. This bears a noticeable similarity to auditing. Much like processing in the film, auditing is based in repetition, controlling emotion, and reliving past trauma. Freddy faces times in his life in which he had sex with a member of his family and unresolved feelings about a woman he loved named Doris. In The Master and in Real World Scientology, these sessions are recorded, but only in Scientology do they use a device called an E-meter. It's basically a crude lie detector of sorts, but performed by amateurs. Auditors say that an e-meter detects the mass of your thoughts, which is bogus pseudoscience. They also say that e-meters help us detect images from past lives. During auditing, Scientologists purge bad memories to go clear the concept of eliminating the reactive mind that houses our fears. Scientologists also claim that by eliminating this past trauma, actual physical ailments can be cured. In the film, Dodd says that processing, the film's version of auditing, can cure cancer. The cause's processing, like auditing, bamboozles the person taking the test. They believe that they can travel back through time into their memories and relive past lives. It's the stuff of carnivals, but dressed up as science. In one scene in The Master, Lancaster Dodd, after revealing his second book, is questioned by another believer in the cause. She asks why the phrasing for finding past memories has changed because the new word, imagine, suggests making up memories rather than genuinely locating them. Dodd responds vaguely, but the implication is that this will be easier for people to envision their so-called lost memories. It will create more followers, more believers, and therefore more money for the cause and for Dodd himself. There are differing theories within Scientology criticism as to whether or not L. Ron Hubbard believed in Dianetics and Thetans and all that. After all, a lot of his religious concepts that would eventually become the basis for Scientology appeared in his earlier science fiction writing. Skeptics say that Hubbard merely repurposed his pulp short stories into a religion to make money and that everything was a scam. There were many who knew Hubbard who have since claimed that he told them he wanted to make it big and that the best way would be to start a religion. Others, even those who now condemn Scientology as quackery, say Hubbard was a true believer and that he was once even terrified during an auditing session when the founder of the religion believed he had a vengeful Thetan living inside of himself. In The Master, we never learn how sincere Lancaster Dodd is either. His son insists that Dodd is making things up as he goes along, but there's never a gotcha scene in the film in which Dodd is exposed as a swindler. People have genuinely believed stranger things, and with even less evidence. But does that matter in the real world? Does L. Ron Hubbard's intentions, his private thoughts, matter more than the consequences of his actions? Scientology is bunk but so is a lot of supernatural stuff. People are free to believe what they want so long as it doesn't hurt anyone. 
The Church of Scientology does hurt people. So does it matter if a dead man believed it was real or not? Does it matter if Hubbard was a true believer or an intentional liar? Does that change the living conditions of the RPF? Would it make the harassment campaigns against ex-Scientologists sting any less? Would it make the wallets of those taken in by e-meter auditing any less empty? Hubbard detailed his rules for attacking critics in a number of policy letters, including one often quoted by critics as the fair game policy. Any critic of the Church of Scientology is called a suppressive person and may be deprived of property or injured by any means, tricked, sued, or lied to or destroyed. This policy from 1967 was no longer displayed in public shortly thereafter, but critics argue only the term was removed, but not the practice. In separate cases in 1979 and 1984, attorneys for Scientology argued that the fair game policy was still a core belief of their church, and as such deserved protection as religious expression. Harassment campaigns exist to this day, and the Church of Scientology would like it protected under their religion. The list of ex-Scientologists who have spoken out against the Church and its cruel practices is long. Too long for this video. I will leave resources in the description. People debate whether or not Scientology is a religion, and whether Hubbard believed his own nonsense. In the film, there are scenes in which Freddy doubts his new faith and returns to it, and doubts it, and returns to it. Freddy is a lost soul, and his quest for meaning in his life, something to believe in, a master, is central to the film. But whether or not Dodd believes his own bullshit isn't as important as what his actions, regardless of intent, have created. To me, the question of whether Hubbard was a scam artist who hurt people or a zealot who hurt people is probably not all that important to those he hurt and those who continue to be hurt long after he passed away. Hi everyone, if you like what I do, please click on the orange Patreon link below. That's how this show happens. It's also the only way to request an episode. Also, please like, share, subscribe, and click on the notification bell so that you never miss an episode. I'll see you next week.